Let's talk some sports, baby. Take it by Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by Jones. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we going to do. We going to holler at you until next time, baby. All right, we'll stay in the NBA bubble. There was another NBA game uh, last night with the Utah Jazz and the New Orleans Pelicans facing off. Jazz win that one, 106-104. Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell led the Jazz. Also get help from Jordan Clarkson. He scored 23 off the bench. The Pelicans had a lead in the second half, but with Zion benched with a minutes restriction, they were unable to close the game out. Jazz keep pace with uh, that three through six range of Western Conference playoff teams. The Pelicans, though, they take an early hit on their hopes to catch Memphis in the playoff race. So what stood out to you the most from this game? Yeah, so overall, I hold on, my phone, phone's got one of those Amber Alerts. Uh, missing six foot six, 285-pound <laughs> forward from the Pelican. Oh, yeah. Yeah, missing Zion. That was kind of a big deal. I – man, that is – it, what's disappointing about it for New Orleans is you could look at this in a way where you could go, man, we only had Zion a few minutes and we still almost won the game. But how you should look at it is this is really disappointing if you're in New Orleans. You have one of the two best teams of your schedule on the ropes because your schedule is basically the Jazz and the Clippers Saturday, and then you play you know, pretty much the, the bottom feeders the rest of the time. So this is one of your only two big games you had. And you didn't have your best player for most of the game, and you let it get away. And one of the biggest issues was these periods of just really sloppy basketball. I mean, the the New Orleans Pelicans turned the ball over last night 21 times. Now, that stat's pretty bad. But you can look at the Jazz and go, oh, well, well, the Jazz also turned it over 20 times. So, like, what's your point, you? Well, my point is the Jazz are dead last in forced turnovers in the NBA. They currently only t- force 12.2 per game. Their defense is very kind of come at me sort of defense. They don't really get on the attack too much on defense. And there were just these careless throwaways. You know, Lonzo Ball and Drew Holiday were some of the biggest culprits. They combined for nine of the turnovers. And you and me both saw a lot of passes where, like, Ball would just throw it at the virtual fans. I guess they were going to catch it and and shoot one from their laptop, I guess. But, you know, if you're a team that isn't going to bother really to play defense, which the Pelicans really don't, and your scoring is sort of still fits and starts, you don't really have that, like, reliable scoring – You can't do that, you know, and that is something that really crippled the Pelicans last night because they played fairly well, you know, for stretches outside of that. They had some good contributions. Brandon Ingram looked really good last night. Uh, J.J. Redick really kind of helped buoy that second unit at times, and Derek Favors was bumping bodies with Gobert and doing his grind and work, but you can't. You can't be playing that kind of basketball down the stretch because a team like the Jazz is going to catch up to you. And I don't think the Jazz, like, won this game. New Orleans lost it. You know, the Jazz played their consistent, methodical basketball, and they just sort of hoped New Orleans would start messing around and get back in it. And, hey, mission accomplished. That's what they did. You know, the Jazz, to me, they were really lackluster on offense, and they don't they don't really have a lot of scoring weapons if Donovan Mitchell isn't hot, you know, but what you can't, and that, that's fine. You, you have your team identity. You're going to play tough defense. You're going to be consistent. You're going to try to win these games and sort of these slower pace games. That That's fine. But what I really can't excuse last night was the jazz's ball movement. It was virtually non-existent. It was awful at times. And a lot of these possessions were just these ISO ball barf ups, like four dudes would come down there and they just stand there and they look at the fans and they look at the bench and, think about what they're eating later and then one dude just takes some contested jumper and it's like what what are y'all doing like I mean there are teams that can kind of do that you know you got your teams with guys like James Harden who can just shoot from anywhere well hey that's great but the Jazz don't play that kind of game and Jazz are gonna have to have that really good team basketball because I just kept thinking you know watching the game if a team like Houston or Oklahoma City was in a seven game series right now they would wax them in round one they'd probably bounce them in four or five games uh, they're going to keep this going. You know, Mike Conley is going to have to play a lot better than he did. He'll have to play better like he did in the second half because he did pick it up. You know, he was real rusty in that first half, but he started to pick it up. And I'm going to need something from this bench besides Jordan Clarkson playing 2K by himself. Like, I like him. I, he did great. He was a great spark. He's a great kind of six-man, kind of spark off the bench. Great acquisition of the trade. He's been hot since he got there. But I, I'm going to need something from the Jazz's offense. 
more than just enough to beat the Pelicans. That's not going to cut it in the Western Conference when it comes time for the, for the heavy hitters to show up. And, and it kind of it spins back to the whole team ball versus star ball problem where I think teams like the Jazz and the Celtics and teams that play more team concept basketball without these superstars that you can just close your eyes and hand them the ball and have them do stuff, they're going to struggle, I think, more because of all the rust and all the lack of practice and things like that, where by now their chemistry would be clicking and they'd have all their systems figured out, whereas a lot of these these teams that just rely on their superstars doing the superstar thing. And I think the jazz are going to be one of those examples. So, yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, overall the Pelicans, they could have played so much better than they did, but we got to figure out where, what, what's up with this new Zion thing. Cause we're here and now it's going to be a thing for the next couple games. Maybe they just don't want to be here and they don't care about the playoff spot. They're just trying to tank. I don't know what it is. I really don't, but we do that and we get a little more respect for ball control and defense. This team could challenge Memphis. They could, I would argue they'd even be a matchup challenge for a few playoff teams, but this, this ain't going to cut it and they don't have a lot of time to fix it. I told you I was concerned about the Utah Jazz, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm still concerned. Anybody, any Utah Jazz fans that are encouraged by this win, you're not paying attention. Um, because there, there were a lot of things about them last night that were very underwhelming, including their lackluster three-point shooting. Yeah, eight for 34. Yeah, you're not, going, you're not winning many games um, like that unless the other team just all of a sudden decides, our best player, you know, he just won't be a factor. We'll play him like three minutes a quarter. Who would do, that? And that, Who would do that? That'll just be – yeah, that'll just be cool. Um, it says something – it really – doesn't it – and I said this um, repeatedly last night. Royce O'Neal was the most impressive player for me on, U on the Utah Jazz. I was very impressed with what he gave them. Um, stepping in the starting lineup for – remember, no Bojan Bogdanovic. That's a huge deal for me. Um but I thought he played an exceptional game. Um, Clarkson, outside of um, the three-point shooting, he was not good. But not like that's a, not like he was the only one. But he was a, he was a big spark off the bench. You mentioned Conley. Uh, Conley picked up in the second half. Turned out to be a, a pretty s solid performance. And Gobert, standard, fourteen and twelve, yada yada. Just you know, dunk the ball every now and then. Um, but when I look at the Jazz. And I don't want to make this as a definitive statement, but Donovan Mitchell, um, he's a fine player, all-star material. Um, but when I look at him, I really question how far he can lead a team. That's where I'm at with Donovan Mitchell. I just don't – and, and what I mean is I don't, see, I don't see him making other guys better. I really don't. Um, as far as I th he can get his own shot anytime he wants, but I don't, I don't quite see the facilitator in him. You know, he did have five assists last night, so I'm not going to say he can't do it. And I think him and Gobert, they did some good things in the pick and roll last night. But by and large, I just don't see it. There's too many possessions in my estimation where it turns into a little bit of hero ball. There, you mentioned it, though, some of the offensive sets they ran. I don't even know if you could classify them as offensive sets. But there wasn't a whole lot of rhythm to their offense. Um, so, I, I, again, I got concerns about them. And I've said this repeatedly. Um, if the Houston Rockets meet the Jazz in the first round, that's a clean sweep. Houston's sweeping this team. They just got Russell Westbrook and James Harden. Um, th that's just too much firepower. And the, the Jazz, as solid as they are defensively, they won't be able to match how Houston can score in bunches. They just won't. That is, to me, that, that is factual. I don't, see how, I don't see how they win a game in that series. I really don't. As far as the Pelic on the, on the other side, there, there is disappointment all around in, in this game. The New Orleans Pelicans, I don't know who made this decision to play Zion. Is it 13 minutes? Is that how much he played? 15, I think, yeah. He had 13 15? points okay. in 15 minutes, I think is the – Okay, 13 – okay, 15 minutes. That – I don't understand what that is about. If you recall – the first game Zion played against the Spurs, first regular season game, so much anticipation. He played more than that, coming off an injury. He wasn't coming off an injury here. He just went to handle some family business. He comes back. The NBA has got to be – the NBA should be on the phone right now with New Orleans, or they should have done it after last night. And they should be like, um, hey, David Griffin, 
you know we set this whole bubble up for you guys, right? You Zion is the reason we expanded this. Yeah. If, if you won't go play Zion Williamson, what are we even doing? We could have just went, we could have just brought 16 teams here and went, you know, played some, uh, you know, get some uh, scrimmages, get some, you know, tune-up games, and then we go straight to the playoffs. We, we, we even made it easy for y'all. We put in this bogus four-game, three-game play-in thing. You, you got to be four games within the eight seed. We made this so easy for y'all. And y'all going to come out here with this? Really? You, you, you still got the training wheels on him. And even more so than the first game he played. I don't understand that at all. That was a huge disappointment. And the NBA in general, the NBA front office, they should be looking at New Orleans today and like, this was a mistake. Man, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even be mad if they looked at New Orleans and said, you know what, just get out the bubble. Go home. You're not even trying. They, New Orleans didn't even try last night because they sat their best player and did not let him play the game of basketball. And I think real, it's a tr- – Yeah, just real quick, if you didn't see the game, he ate it up the few minutes he played. Again, he was 13 yeah. or 15 points. He scored a point a minute. He was electric, six of eight. It was like no you just want to see more of it, you know? No question. They couldn't handle him. I mean, you talk about Nothing. some of those guys. They got Gobert down there. None of them guys can check him. He does whatever he wants going to the basket. It's a travesty. I don't. I don't think it's Alvin Gentry that made this call. It's no, got to be above not. Alvin it's Gentry. It's not. He said it's not him. He said in the yeah. press conference it's not him. That, but I, I, I said I really mean what I say. I would not. I would not blame the NBA, and it, they're not going to do it. But if the NBA came out and said, "Go home. Go to New Orleans. Just go to New Orleans. You're done." Because they didn't even try last night. And what's in, what's incre- and this is why the Jazz should be concerned. New Orleans, they did not try because they didn't even play, they didn't even play Zion. That's not real. Th- 15 minutes. You didn't even try. Mm-hmm. And it's still, it came down to a last second shot by Brandon Ingram. The ja- the, again, the Jazz are in trouble. And New Orleans right now, they still have a cake schedule. And I think they can still stay within striking distance. Because it, it, it's, the schedule is that soft. They can still have a chance to do the play-in against Memphis or, you know, whatever, whatever it shakes out. They, it's still possible in my estimation. Memphis, Memphis lost, lost game. their game today. So right, okay. They're still, that's right. you know. So it's still, yeah, the, yeah that, that lead, four-game lead, something like that, that's, that's still what it remained. Yep. But, I mean, Zion was, he was 13 points, six of eight, doing whatever he wanted. Um, I thought Drew Holiday, I, I was impressed with him by and large. I thought he played a fine game. Um, Brandon Ingram, Br- Brandon Ingram, he's, he's a walking bucket at this point. Um, much, much improved, definitely in, the cons- uh, in consideration for most improved player. He's had a great season. Yep. Um, J.J. Redick did some things for you last night. Um, I, I'm, I am going to say that uh, Lonzo Ball, he was, he was a travesty last night. I mean, two for 13. Looking like look like he looked like he took he shot uh, t- took in jump shooting practice in months. I don't know the whole the whole layoff. He wasn't he wasn't even concerned with keeping that jump shot up. I got to see a little bit more from him. Um, but it's it's such a disappointment. I mean, we talked about and, and Drink has made this point on several occasions. A lot of people are not interested in New Orleans without Zion. That's the reason you want to watch. That's the reason, in my estimation, New Orleans is here with all these other Spurs, Wizards, Suns. None of these teams belong in here. They don't. But because we threw in the Pelicans, we had to, you know, throw in some few more teams, and you had to bring an Eastern Conference team along to make it look like they challenging for a playoff spot, which they're not. I mean, Bradley Beal said, no, nah, man, I'm not even worrying about this. This is – we, we – we, we, we're not good. We're not making it. Um, so overall, and it, and it was sloppy to your earlier point. This was, a, this was a pretty sloppy game. And I think some of that is to be expected because even though you have the scrimmages, I think this was the first actual game that they played. The bigger point, and this is a bigger point to the whole NBA, I'm not all that concerned. I, I, do, want, I, I do hope they tighten it up a little bit as we progress. But it's the playoffs that I'm really looking at. Uh, the playoffs, we need to see some clean, fine-tuned basketball. If we have that, all of these games will be worth it. But yeah, in the end, I'm not the Jazz. You shouldn't be all that encouraged by this win. 
you, you need to be a lot better than you were last night. And New Orleans didn't even try. They really didn't. 